Okay, we are live. Okay, thank you. It is 4.32 and I would like to call to order the uh, February 22nd meeting of the uh, police commission. We have a quorum with Commissioner Straniti and Commissioner Frank Collier Clemens. Uh, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the January 25th, 2021 meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Collier Clemens. Any corrections, deletions, additions? Yes, I have six corrections. Okay, uh, you have the floor. Uh, page three. Um, on the second paragraph, beginning with Mayor Rillings, line four, uh, near the end, it says, he said what this, that should be these, the word this before officers should be these. Uh, and okay. you got that? Yep, yep, line five actually. Yeah, that's what I said, line five. Oh, okay. You said and, what is this officer, okay. And then in paragraph three, line eight, there are two corrections. Is that the department has, um, it, it's the standards have, H-A-V-E, and then um, and should be A-N-D, that they addressed it and, uh, and investigated it. That was okay. just a typo slip, I guess. Then on page uh, four, Paragraph two, yep. line seven and eight. Line seven, um, since should be seen, S-E-E-N. Seen a significant increase, yep. Okay, and then uh, the total amount of tickets there should be that. Okay, yep. Okay, and then on um, page seven under informational items, paragraph two, uh, line three, uh, typo again, it should be the school instead of he school. Okay. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, Commissioner Straniti, do you have any corrections or deletions, omissions? No. Chief, or, Chief or Deputy Chiefs? Nope. Okay, then uh, motion to approve the minutes as corrected. Aye. Motion, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye, motion carries, thank you. And now we go back to the agenda, uh, public comment. Mr. Manzi, do we have anybody that wishes to address the police commission? We have several people on. If you'd like to address the police commission, please raise your hand electronically now and I will unmute you. I do not see anyone that wishes to address the uh, mayor. Okay. Seeing, uh, Chief, do you have any documents or comments from the public that need to be read into the uh, minutes? No, I do not. Okay, seeing none, uh, we will then close the uh, public participation section of the meeting. Uh, recognition, uh, January Officer of the Month, Officer Russ Ouellette, uh, Chief. Yes. Uh Officer Ouellette is assigned to community policing and he's assigned to the West Avenue corridor, which includes the Sono collection wall. And he's taken it upon himself to really um, immerse himself in that area, especially the issues at the mall and with mall staff. Um, to the point that he's, when he returns from off days or uh, checking when he's not on duty, the incident log to see if anything occurred at the mall that he can, he's aware. He noticed an assault case had been reported while he was off duty where two arrests were made. He reviewed that case, noticed that there was a third person that was not identified and not arrested and took it upon himself to contact the mall, review surveillance video, uh, follow up on the suspect that he observed in the surveillance videos, 
subsequently identified the person and obtained a confession and arrested the third person involved in the assault that occurred there. And this was all uh, done strictly from his own initiatives uh, and on his own, uh, which was really nice to see. It's really, truly uh, taking an interest in his area and going above and beyond. So we wanted to make sure we recognize that as uh, officer of the month for January. This was pointed out to us by Sergeant Calise. Thank you. I did read that and um, I thought it was really uh, a, a, a good example of um, uh, officers just taking that extra strip. It's so easy to just ignore that and the two arrests were made, uh, but Officer Ouellette um, was very proactive, which is a testament to his uh, dedication, his professionalism, and I'm sure that uh, the people at the mall were very uh, uh, pleased as well that he was able to do that. So I want to congratulate him and thank him for uh, just taking that little extra step that many people might just kind of glossed over it. But uh, Officer Let uh, uh, did take care of that. And uh, for that, he was given Officer of the Month and I thought it was well-deserved. Uh, commissioners, any comments? Yes, I think it was uh, very much deserved and uh, you know, besides all the training that our officers re uh, receive, uh, you know, having established a culture of community policing and respecting uh, the community, uh, he developed a relationship uh, with the security guards of the security system there at the mall for which he could call upon. And I think a lot of the officers do that as well. And that's not anything that's really written anywhere. And it comes from... Uh, you know, wanting to do the very best job you can wherever you are assigned and uh, doing it to completion. And congratulations, officer. Thank you. Commissioner Sterniti. Uh, yes, I just agree that it's a great job and very proud and another example of very fine police work in our community. And I agree too about the community police officers. This is another example of what a great resource that is and um, happy to see it. So thanks. And, and, you know, when you have that particular area and you feel very uh, committed to making sure that that area is taken care of, uh, that's what community policing is all about. As Commissioner Collier Clemens mentioned and Commissioner Striti, develop, uh, Straniti, developing those relationships, um, people feel comfortable with you, you get to know the people and uh, you get to uh, uh, just interact with them on a, in a way that is uh, going to help out the area and go, going to make things uh, much better in an area. So uh, again, uh, hats off to uh, Officer Roulette and congratulations and thank you. Okay, next item, um, in, so uh, patrol staffing. Deputy Chief uh, Walsh. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor Rilly. Uh, for January 2021, uh, 176 sworn personnel. We swore in uh, officers Alvarez and Russo as probationary officers, and Officer Crawford is still on a leave of absence. Leaves us with five patrolman vacancies in the month of January. There was 150.25 sick days used by sworn personnel and 73 workman's comp days. Uh, three officers were on extended workman's comp, which uh, accounted for most of the days used in that month. Detective Bureau for January 2021 opened 31 cases, nothing significant to report. Uh, special services activity, they opened 39 cases. They continued their enforcement of underage vape sales throughout the city, which they started in December and they're doing a great job. They also assisted the uh, federal authorities in uh, following up several leads and uh, JTTF investigations having to do with the Washington incident on January 6th, and uh, also assisted the FBI in the arrest of a dog resident on a, a RICO indictment. So they had a busy month. A special Victims Unit remained busy with 33 open uh, cases. Uh, they did uh, resolve a 17-year-old runaway who had took the family car, and they located him in Pennsylvania. Uh, and they continued uh, several uh, ongoing uh, other investigations within the uh, unit. Traffic unit um, saw a change in command for January 2001. Uh, Lieutenant Dino, um, Sergeant Calise were transferred in there effective January 1 uh, uh, with some uh, new personnel. Um, Officer Gonzalez, uh, Officer Lavallo are now in there. Um, 
And as you can see, more, our, some of our enforcement has definitely picked back up. In the month of uh, January, there was 317 infractions issued compared to 79 the previous month. Um, we were concentrating on uh, speeding in some of our high complaint areas, West Rocks, East Rocks, East Avenue, and also did a lot of uh, intersections for stop signs. Ward and Union were identifying different areas where the residents uh, make complaints and uh, putting a lot of selective enforcement out there. And we also did an accounting of all our speed trailers and speed signs and getting some of those repaired. So you'll see some more of those out there in the uh, community slowing traffic down. And we'll also be recording that data. Uh, total criminal arrests for January 2021 was 167. Patrol division calls for service of 4,639. Um, infractions, 317, as I stated. Um, traveling too fast was the number one with 79 infractions issued throughout the city. And then stop sign and other, which is 66. So enforcement is definitely picked up again. So I see a, a necessary noise there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm sure as the springtime comes along, there'll be many more opportunities. Yes. We're looking at uh, different areas of uh, enforcement, getting more information on uh, where we could uh, mm -hmm. assign some of the traffic guys. Any questions on the uh, selective enforcement report before we move on to the arrests? No. None. Okay. Um, Deputy Chief, any uh, comments on the arrests and so forth? I know you've talked about some of them already regarding um, the RICO event and all that. Anything? Yeah, the, RICO, the, uh, the FBI indictment had to do more or less with an incident out of Bridgeport um, from a Nowak resident involving a shooting that occurred two years ago. He just happened to be a Nowak resident. Um, really didn't involve any uh, any local nexus to all violence. It's something that occurred in Bridgeport, so we assisted them. Um, in regards to uh, the JTTF, uh, our TFO, Officer Lapica, was quite busy um, following up various leads of intelligence throughout not only Norfolk but southwestern Connecticut because his TFO area covers all of this area, so he, he remained quite busy. Um, we are, as you can see, we've had a few vape shops open up um, throughout town, several more, so we are going to continue our enforcement of those for underage sales, which seems to be significant and uh, hopefully sending the message out there to stop the underage sales of, of vape Good. and uh, other products. Good. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? No. Comments from the chief or? Okay, so we'll move on to the administrative report. Uh, Deputy Chief Zeka. Um, this month was relatively light for training. Um, we had our monthly uh, specialized uh, teams training, the ESU training, SCUBA, et cetera, um, with their, in, in their monthly trainings. We had a little uh, cleaning up some of the remainder of the firearms training and qualifications. And then the one training of note is that we were able to get a few of our sergeants into uh, CIT class, which is the crisis intervention training, which we're slowly trying to um, get all of patrol certified in. And then I have a full presentation on our overall uh, training, but I think that's more toward the end of the agenda. Okay. If I could just add just one thing quickly. We did in the past several weeks interview the last of the uh, entry level candidates and made several offers to some good people and we're waiting for their backgrounds now to be done. We also interviewed a number of lateral candidates. We had a large number of lateral candidates apply. Uh, we narrowed the list down and then interviewed, I believe, 16. Uh, and uh, we have a list. We, we made conditional offers to several of those, and we're assuming their backgrounds will be fine since they're currently working in other agencies right now. Because um, we do have quite a few openings, and the prospects of entry level candidates at this point is not good since we've exhausted the list, and even the academies are tough to get. So uh, we'll be looking to. 
put on some lateral candidates and we found some really good people. So you'll be seeing hopefully uh, at a commission meeting in the near future, uh, the background package for those people. Okay. Very good, thank you. Next item on the agenda, master's degree stipend for officer Edgar Gonzalez. Yeah, as you recall, he's been getting a tuition reimbursement for his master's classes. He's now successfully completed his master's and he, with a 4.0 average from uh, Sacred Heart University and he's requesting the tuition stipend added to his pay for a master's degree. I see his um, transcript here, but do we have a diploma or any other document accompanying it? I don't have his diploma. I just have the transcript okay. showing his completion. We can get a copy of that if you'd like. Yeah, so um, I'll take a motion to move this to the table. I so, I so move. Okay, can move by Commissioner Collier Clemens. Yeah, I, I think this is fine. We'll just we'll make it contingent upon him presenting his diploma uh, for your consideration. But um, more importantly, I wish him congratulations for his pursuit of higher education and uh, being able to uh, finish with a GPA of 4.0, which is um, quite remarkable and uh, will enable him to perform his duties as a police officer uh, more effectively with greater knowledge and uh, be an asset to the department. Uh, commissioners, any comments or? Oh, just a yeah. huge congratulations to Officer Gonzalez on his 4.0. That's amazing. Yeah, it really is amazing. Full-time job, full-time student, and he comes out with a 4.0. Kudos to him and to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor of approving the master's degree stipend for Officer Edgar Gonzalez? Aye. Aye, motion carries unanimously, thank you. And I, I'd like for uh, the, the chief to please uh, convey our, our, our being very proud of his accomplishment. Yeah, good, thank you. Next is the tuition reimbursement, Detective Brendan Collins. I think the course of study is supposed to be investigations. <laughs> Unless it's a medical field, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm wondering. <laughs> well, if it's a medical field, then it's not reimbursable. <laughs> well, I was saying, you know, I've, I've been out of law enforcement now for about uh, almost nine years, and I'm wondering if there was a new topic. <laughs> <laughs> I take, a, take a motion to move this forward. I'll move the item forward for approval. So this Eddie. is... A, so he approved, he uh, completed the course uh, regulation occupational fraud investigations at uh, University of New Haven. Um, he provided the documentation successfully completing the course and his receipt for payment. The total was 2895. So he's requesting 50% back, 1447.50. And his course was approved back in May of 2019 by the commission. Um, I'm, a, I'm just checking it. When I look at the payment receipt, it says one four four seven fifty for total amount. Is that? I I think the University of of uh, New Haven pays half. Yeah, I believe they give fifty percent for uh, police officers. The fifty percent uh, uh, deduction. Oh, okay. Then the other then the other fifty percent is. The reimbursement and uh, th that is authorized because I remember that um, the contract saying you get 50% of the cost of tuition so uh, it works out rather well so um, any further discussion none for me uh, all in favor of reimbursing officer uh, detective Brendan Collins in the amount of uh, $1,447.50 for tuition reimbursement. Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, complimentary letters, Chief. Yep, uh, got several. The first was from the Carver Center to Officer Delgado regarding the toy drive. Uh, he dropped off a, a number of toys 
uh, to Carver Center and they sent a letter thanking him for going above and beyond and helping them provide uh, toys to a number of the youth at Carver. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is from a Nowak resident. It was just a minor thing, but she, she sent me an email that she was driving down the street. She saw Officer Suda stop to his patrol car to get out to remove a bag of garbage that had blown into the roadway and put the garbage away. And she just thought it was a minor thing, but she wanted to acknowledge that he went, went out of his way to, to do that. He could have just driven by. Uh, mm -hmm. The third one is from a Nowak resident. This is regarding uh, an individual during the larger main, main snowstorm uh, needed uh, medication from the pharmacy. They tried to deliver it. They could not. Uh, they were feeling sick and frightened. They didn't know what to do. So they contacted, uh, they called for the fire department. However, uh, Lieutenant Blake was working in dispatch at the time, called her back. She explained the situation and he dispatched Officer Sefcik to pick up the pharmacy prescription and deliver it to her. And she's very thankful and was surprised that uh, that would would have that could happen and uh, we thank him for that as well. Officer Wasilewski, a thank you letter for installing another car seat. He gets a lot of these, but he does a lot of car seat installations for us and the people are very pleased that he's there to do that for him. And then finally, from uh, NOAC EMS director regarding a uh, emotionally disturbed person call on South Main Street. He commented about Officer Ortiz, Officer Ham, Officer Silva, Officer Gay, and Officer Mitchell, as well as Sergeant Sherry, and the excellent job they did de-escalating the situation, calming people down, and communicating in a safe manner, and the situation was remedied without any major issues, and they thank them for their professionalism in, in doing that. It's nice to see all these letters of thanks, and, you know, uh, when... You know, we, we get periodic complaints now and then, but, you know, when somebody takes the time to write uh, a, a complimentary letter about an officer's uh, performance, um, that's, that really is something, and we really, truly appreciate it. And again, it's officers uh, not going above and beyond because we don't know what be above and beyond really means, but we do know that they take that uh, little extra uh, step that, you know, might very easily be ignored, but uh, not not in the Norwalk Police Department. And I'm also uh, pleased from the letter from uh, EMS. Uh, you know, I know we train our officers, uh, ex extensive training on uh, dealing with emotionally disturbed uh, individuals. Um, we, we know that um, nationwide when uh, sometimes an officer deals with an emotionally disturbed individual, uh, the outcome isn't always that great. And there's always, uh, uh, there's always potential for a problem. But uh, I want to, I, I know personally of uh, situations where officers were involved in uh, dealing with people who were exper experiencing extreme stress, trauma, um, emotional disturbance, uh, they were emotionally disturbed. Uh, and the officer's training and experience um, and their patience uh, in dealing with that situation uh, made that situation uh, able to calm it down and to be able to end with, with a good outcome. So I, I wanna personally acknowledge that as well. Uh, commissioners, any uh, comments on the letters? I'm just glad to hear them. I think this is one of the better parts of our meetings. Uh, and I think it's good because everything bad just seems to be ex exploited and reported over and over again. But these everyday things that mean a lot to our citizens is often overlooked. So I look forward to this. Thank you, Chief. I also always say this is my favorite part of our meeting. And it's not even just um, being proud of our officers and everything, but it's also being grateful that we have residents that take the time out to send these notes. I mean, that really is a lot for people in their busy day to take the time out to give the recognition um, for people doing a job well done uh, it just, it, it warms my heart, I have to say, uh, you know, on both ends of this situation. So um, thanks, and I'm glad for having this shared and included in our meeting every month. 
Thank you. Um, next, uh, we have a presentation on department training. everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Um, so I was asked to um, give you a presentation on our training. Um, the information about the academy, I'm going to go through very briefly since it's a tremendous amount of information in terms of all the training an officer gets. So um, all of all of our officers are certified um, by post, uh, which is the Connecticut Police Officers uh, Standards and Training Council. It's the academy is 25 to six weeks and the curriculum is 1340 hours minimum. And the officers we currently have attending the academy are mostly virtual. They're here um, via Zoom for many of their classes. But then for anything that's hands-on practical skills, they're then going to the academy. Where normally um, the academy would be all in person, um, you know, pre-COVID all in person and they would stay there. So um, the curriculum areas covered there um, in general are an introduction to law enforcement, police and the law, you know, their practical skills, human relations, social justice, criminal investigations, and patrol procedures. And obviously each of those general categories are broken down into um, a tremendous amount of classes, but we would be here all night if, if I go through all of them. Um, once they complete the academy, they come back to the department and then they have a, a 10 week field training where they're assigned to three different field trainers. Um, on each shift, they rotate through our three shifts so that they get experience with um, the nuances of each shift and experience to different officers um, in terms of how they handle things. They, they additionally go to combined dispatch for a week and then our holding facility for a week to get a better understanding of those functions. Um, and then we assign them to community police services for a month after, after they're actually certified then um, so they get a better understanding of what our community outreach and what, what we expect of our officers. And then newly we're going to be assigning to the detective division for one week so they get a, a little more of a hands-on about the detective division. So Every officer annually, after, once, they're, once they're certified and out of the academy annually, the training we do for all, and this may be you know, in different forms, but it's ethics, bias, um, body-worn cameras, human trafficking, employee assistance program, which is EAP, workplace harassment, legal updates, so any new laws coming out, et cetera, um, criminal intelligence and how to handle that, uh, mental health issues, because we're, uh, you know, obviously always um, dealing with mental uh, health crises in the community, and, and the more we can train on that, the better. Um, then annually, they'll qualify with their firearms and um, have training on the use of force policy and practical skills, our all hazards plan and incident command. And then during the year, we'll do various um, lineup trainings for whatever topics may come up that we think we need to make sure the officers have additional training on. For um, recertification, the officers are, are recertified every three years. So that recertification process is a minimum of a 60 hours um, in credit hours. Um, and the topics that usually are covered are sexual assault, rape crisis, juvenile matters, domestic violence, again, human trafficking, 
narcotics, DUI procedures, <coughs> excuse me, um, different criminal investigation and crime scene information, gangs, weapons, legal updates, report writing, bias and implicit bias, cultural awareness. We have a variety of different classes related to cultural awareness, um, citizens with special needs, such as autism and things like that. Um, this year we've done a mental health first aid kit, um, which is, is a tremendous class to, to help the officers and uh, identify these things. Um, we're always looking at different human relations topics. And then they're also required um, to recertify in NCIC Collect, which is the computer system. Um, our officers are emergency medical first responders. Um, so they recertify in that. We spend a lot of time with de-escalation training use of force, handcuffing and arrest procedures, um, pursuits, high risk stops, um, driver, driver training, and then obviously their firearms and, and taser training is already in the way. So in addition to what is required for them to recertify, um, we do a, a variety of different specialized training and that may not be the entire department. It, you know, certain classes are for the entire department and then other are for specialties. Um, we do like Project Lifesaver, which um, would help with, uh, it, we have a, a, variety, a few officers trained in that so that when the members who in the community who, who belong, who participate in this program, it should one of them wander, um, it would help us in being able to track them and find them and bring them home safely. Um, we've done a considerable amount of training in school shootings or active shooter, active threat and shooter situations to make sure we're all prepared for uh, the unthinkable. Um, we have a certain amount of officers who are trained in, in accident reconstruction um, and we have over the years brought those officers up to um, high levels of certification. Um, each accident is different, different um, dynamics. You know, if you're talking about a motorcycle or a vehicle or a pedestrian. So um, those officers are highly trained um, to make sure that they can, we can properly um, investigate those very serious accidents. Um, we do a, some officers have a suicide prevention training. We have one, um, actually he's a Lieutenant now who handles our U visas. So has received training in that. Um, again, specialized training grant writing for those who are assigned to those functions. All our school resource officers um, go through a certification course before um, going into the schools. Recently, um, with the change in the noise ordinance in town, we finally, you know, it took, it was a little delayed really because of COVID, but we finally um, have about a dozen officers trained in the new noise meter and the new noise ordinance to be able to properly investigate and enforce those that ordinance, which is is uh, you know very technical in terms of um, the use of the noise meter and so proper, um, taking proper measurements and doing the proper enforcement. Um, we have uh, many officers were trained in a tactical emergency casualty care, which TECC, which basically was um, in terms of going into a place. So if in um, an active threat, and you have casualties, we can get into the building, get EMS and fire into the building with us, get them to be able to start helping wounded while we're still um, dealing with an active threat so that you're, you're getting medical attention to people quicker. Um, Below 100 is a program that uh, we've done over the years to try to, it, it emphasizes officer safety 
um, things like wearing your seatbelt, you know, not speeding, uh, wearing a vest, uh, you know, not getting complacent, all those things. And the idea is to keep officer deaths down. Um, and as I had mentioned earlier, we trained certain people in the holding facility. Um, Chief, could you, could you uh, explain to the commissioners what a U visa is? Oh, the U visa is for um, someone who is not necessarily a legal immigrant who has been the victim of a crime. And a U visa allows that person to stay, it, who is cooperating with, with a case, to stay in the United States while that case is being processed. Um, to provide relief so that they're not, part of it is so that they're not afraid to come forward and report something because they're afraid they're gonna get deported. So it allows them some, some safety in terms of being able to stay and, and, and not fear um, deportation. Um, and then our investigative divisions, all, all the detectives, um, you get different uh, sp specialized training based on um, you know what their maybe their niche may be um, in terms of like our special victims unit. Some of them went to an infant death investigation or child abuse investigation, whereas um, some of the detectives in um, our detective division would have homicide investigation and. They pretty much all get interview techniques. And then, you know, we have an officer whose forte is fraud investigations and, and does most of our fraud investigations. So he's had um, numerous classes, more and more technical. Um, and then, you know, like background investigations we, so that they can do proper background investigations on all of our new hires. Um, so those are some of the training, different trainings that they get. And then our specialty teams are trained on a monthly basis to make sure they are kept in, a, their skills are kept in a, a ready, ready state, you know, and that they're always ready to react in an emergency. So, and, and when they're called upon. So that's our emergency services unit, the crisis negotiation unit, scuba team, our canine unit, and our honor guard. And then some of the initiatives, the larger initiatives that we're trying to do um, that are outside of our, our mandated training. Um, one is the crisis intervention team that I spoke of earlier. Um, for years, we have had some officers trained. Um, the training is sometimes hard to come by because it's only offered a certain amount of times and there's only a certain amount of spots in this training, but it's basically to recognize and respond to behavioral health conditions and trauma. So it's about calmly being able to take care of a situation and de-escalate it. Um, our goal is to ultimately have the entire department trained. Um, unfortunately, that has to be a few people at a time because we don't, you know, we can't hold just a, a training class. It's very specific about how often these classes are held um, by cable. Um, so right now, current members, we have 67 members trained. Um, so fair and impartial policing. In uh, 2015 and 2016, we trained the entire department in fair and, and we brought um, an outside instructor in and train the entire department. Um, new officers now receive that training in the police academy. Recently, we just sent our, so we have officers trained in, um, in this. And recently we just sent them for a refresher and a certification class to be able to tr teach a new refresher class that just came out. Um, so we plan to start um, that refresher um, this year. Um, crowd control training. We uh, provided crowd control training in 2017. It had been probably many years since we had had um, some practical skills training on it. 
Um, and it was a combination of classroom and practical skills and the idea is to be able to safely manage um, an unlawful gathering um, to keep safe for everyone, for participants, for officers, for everyone. Um, we'd really like to be doing this on a more routine basis. Again, it's, it's practical skills. So you need, you need some repetition to keep them up. Um, so we're hoping in the coming year to be able to provide um, that training again to all the officers. Uh, leads de-escalation training. So although we do in our review credit, we do do, we have an in-house uh, uh, person here who is trained in de-escalation as an instructor. And we do de-escalation in, in all of our re review cycles. Um, in 2015, we brought in Lieutenant Kevin Dillon, um, who is very well respected and, and very enthusiastic. And he trained over half the department in his LEADS de-escalation training. It was very well received. He's dynamic and engaging and um, I think had a, a, had a, a lot of impact. Um, so there's 72 officers still uh, who did not, were not in those classes at the time. So we're hoping to get him back in actually next month to provide the full class to those officers. And then additionally, we'd like to do a half day refresher because um, the full class is an eight hour day. Um, so hopefully do a half day refresher for all those officers who had previously received the training because it was in 2015. So it's been a while. Um, and then we've been doing more and more over the years about trying to um, properly train our supervisors. So in 2019, we um, had everyone take the FEMA Incident Command and National Incident Management classes. Um, we've sent more of the lieutenants to um, the LIDA uh, Executive Development or Command Colleges, which are presented by the FBI. Um, and currently we are looking to send, we've sent a few sergeants and we're looking to send some more sergeants to the FBI Supervisory Leadership Institute um, and then last year we brought attorney Eric Daigle in and did supervisor training for all um, the lieutenants and sergeants. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the last, oh, I don't know how many years, um, we have been renting a mobile simulation firearms trailer roughly every other year and we put it down at vets and we have it for about a week to two weeks and we bring the officers in off of off um, patrol and have them go through some live scenario um, shooting scenarios and where they're actually firing their real firearms um, and we found that very beneficial training it, it gives much more um, realistic training than their qualifications in the range and things like that so, but what we're now looking to do is we found a, um, a virtual training simulator that we can lease um, and we'll have it here all year round. And it's basically a giant screen. The instructors can control the flow of the scenario. So it can be used much more for de-escalation and it can respond much more to what the officer's actions are. And if they make the wrong choice, it goes one way. If they make the right choice, it goes, you know, in a better way. So it, it will um, help us with de-escalation, um, lethal and non-lethal weapons. And it, and it does encompass all of our weapons. Um, so we are looking to lease that, um, hopefully, so then we can provide that more realistic training probably multiple times a year instead of every other year. And then a new training initiative that we are looking at and kind of on the waiting list for 
is active by uh, bystander for law enforcement. It's called ABLE, and it was put on. It was developed by Georgetown Law, and it the theory behind it was to enhance police culture um, for officers to routinely intervene as necessary to prevent misconduct, avoid police mistakes, and promote officer health and well, wellness. Um, and again, as I said, it, it, this is a new training program. Um, we don't have anybody who's been through it. We are hoping to get a spot in one of the next train the trainer classes so that then we could provide um, the training to all the officers. It looks like a very promising um, program. Of course, those initiatives unfortunately cost money. You know, most of the, the review credit training, the lineup training, the annual training um, is all in our operating budget. But some of those initiatives that I talked about at the end, obviously, um, we would need to find additional funding for. And we believe some of it we can incorporate into our operating budget and um, asset forfeiture. We, there's asset forfeiture funds we plan to use, but um, ultimately to move forward with all of it, we would probably need a special appropriation or something along those lines. Any questions? is very comprehensive and I'd like to take note um, for the commissioner's edification that a lot of the training that we are doing regarding de-escalation, emotionally disturbed people, uh, this training has been ongoing in the city of Norwalk for many years. And I believe our Norwalk Police Department is out in front of a lot of the things that have become issues nationwide. Uh, mandates that are being uh, uh, placed upon police departments, unfunded mandates in most cases. Um, we have been doing it here in Norwalk for many years, and it's a tribute to uh, the professionalism of the department, uh, the training. Uh, as the commission knows, since 1995, the Norwalk Police Department has been nationally accredited and have been able to maintain uh, that accreditation uh, uh, each time that we've had a, a reassessment. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really uh, more difficult to maintain accreditation than it is to uh, uh, obtain it initially. And I think that uh, the people involved in the accreditation process could uh, certainly verify that. But, um, you know, and, and the idea about the training of uh, the ABLE training about these officers um, who may be witnessing another officer that um, is not doing something appropriately or maybe causing a problem uh, to intervene. Um, these are the kinds of things that help professionalize the department uh, to an even greater degree. And I just think that uh, the chief and the deputy chiefs uh, should be commended for the amount of training uh, you, you can never have too much training. Uh, and, and so they should be commended for uh, the amount of training that's going on in the department. Uh, and so I don't know if the commissioners have any comments or questions about any of the training that you, uh, you saw, any of the, uh, the courses that you saw. Hey, I had a couple questions and uh, comments. I just wanna say thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. It was well laid out and very informative and interesting as well. Um, so i just curious, what does LEAD stand for? L-E-A-D, what does that stand for? Oh, you're going to put me on the spot. Oh, um, no. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's a law, en a law enforcement, enforcement active diffusion. Active. Oh, OK. Yes, okay. that's it. <laughs> OK, thanks. <laughs> um, and then I was interested, and I'm glad you talked about FEMA and everything, because I was really interested to know what our liaisons are with state and federal level for specifically emergency management and everything. Um, yeah. and I, mm -hmm. So um, Michelle DeLuca here in the city is actually the deputy uh, emergency management director and is always in contact with um, our region one resources. Yeah. So do you guys do special trainings with her or anything like, like I know FEMA. Um, yes, we have over the years um, done different incident commands and tabletop exercises mm -hmm. on a, on a regional basis. Yeah. In a, a, a 
uh, Norwalk specific basis as well. Oh, okay. So, and is that one of the ones that's a reoccurring training or is that? Um, it's periodic, but uh, it's not, all the officers don't go through that, but um, key people do. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know budget issues are always something to be considered, but that's something that, you know, I would be really interested in seeing more, the more officers that can be involved in that, I think the better, the better it is. I mean, hopefully we don't have a situation where we need all hands on deck like that, but I mean, it's, it's really great to have everybody in line, you know, with things like the national preparedness plan and everything like that as well. So just even if they have a, a little bit more familiarity with it. Yeah, and depending on the scenarios and depending on the situations, we've had different officers involved um, yeah. depending on what we're looking at. Yeah, because I know that FEMA, you know, and the federal government does like an all risks approach, all hazards, all risks. So we, we do provide some training for all of our officers every year on Norwalk's all hazard, on our Norwalk all hazard plan. Yeah, oh, okay. All right, that sounds good. And I had um, one other quick question, which I, this just made me think of it. Do we have a helicopter? No. no. There's a Fairfield County helicopter that we have oh. access to. It's run out of the Stratford Police Department, but it's a regional asset. Oh. And it's, it's run by donations. Yeah. Um, so from time to time, we have called on its services, yeah, yeah. but not that often. And now that we have a very high tech drone, uh, mm -hmm. for searching and things. We've used the drone uh, for yeah. missing people and things like that. So yeah. uh, the drone has worked out really well. Yeah, oh, interesting. Oh, I did miss that in the specialized training. Oh. We do have multiple <laughs> officers trained in, in flying the drone. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that actually takes quite a bit of, of um, work to, they have to, they have imagine. to so. Yeah. All right, that sounds good. That's all for me. Thank you very much. It was great. Glad we did this. Well, I think all of these training uh, programs have been thought out very well. Um, I don't know, I guess the latter ones are the ones that are not funded yet or fully funded. Some of so, those latter uh, initiatives are not yet funded, yes. So um, do we have them prioritized? And as asset fundings come in that we have the dis discretion to, uh, you know, apportion them to whatever uh, training program we want, uh, we have them prioritized so that when it when it comes in, I'm not gonna say if, when it comes in, we can just put it toward that and get that on the ball, get it start rolling. Yeah. yeah, in fact, we plan on moving forward with the simulator using mm -hmm. asset forfeiture funds. And we also plan on moving forward with one of the other trainings using asset forfeiture funds and operating budget. Uh, the big one that's an issue funding wise is the ABLE training. That's kind of uh, because that requires the whole department to go through it. So it's a lot of officers, but um, once we get a better grasp of how much we spend out of asset forfeiture for the other trainings, um, then we can hopefully supplement that. Um, and I won't speak for the mayor, but we'll be begging the mayor for uh, <laughs> support with a special appropriation to, to uh, get the rest of it done. But we are moving forward with a lot of that with resources that we already have. Great. Great. Else I wanted to ask. We've kind of been saving up asset forfeiture funds to, for this purpose um, to be able to do some of these larger projects. Excellent. Yeah, you know, the, the ABLE training is so very important. Uh, you know, sometimes officers don't understand what their obligations are to intervene when uh, there is a situation taking place. Um, and, you know, sometimes they're reluctant to say anything, uh, even a junior officer to a senior officer. But a few properly spoken words uh, can bring a situation back under control. And uh, it's critically important that officers understand that that's not only the right thing to do, it's their obligation to do so. And uh, that kind of training and that kind of reinforcement in the officers' minds uh, will make that, will instill in them that, that um, requirement, that obligation. So I know that uh, uh, hopefully we can get somebody, I believe that 
deputy chief said we're looking to perhaps train the trainer in that or yes yeah because uh, if, yes through um georgetown yeah. law if we can if we can train in people in-house people to provide that training uh that's the type of training that you don't want to do just one time and forget about it that's the kind of training that you would need to do and then reinforce it um, with other kinds of uh, similar scenarios and that kind of thing and Part of the commitment on that training with Georgetown Law to get our trainer, our people trained um, is that you would provide and we would do an annual uh, retraining. Mm -hmm. So to make sure it's not just a one and done, it's, it's a consistent reminder. Yeah, it, 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 that's critically important because an officer that is standing by and doing nothing will be just as responsible as perhaps the officer that's um, not acting appropriately. And they need to know that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we see that in the, in the news in other departments around the country where those that are standing by are on trial now for their part in uh, the death of the citizen. So, I and mean, we know that. I mean, I think each officer knows that in his yes. inner core. But in the in the time, in the you know, in the ensuing time, they forget and think about their brotherhood. Some you know, often, most often, and we're just going to do their career. Well, it ruins their career anyway. I think yeah. the training gives them good strategies to be able to. Uh, productively intervene and you know they have a duty to everyone has a duty to inter intervene and this gives them productive strategies to be able to do so. I hope the uh, commissioners found this helpful. Very helpful. Um, Very I think helpful. that perhaps we can uh, periodically have uh, some other kinds of presentations that um, I think uh, would uh, be interesting and informative. So um, I don't know, maybe uh, whoever the chief selects, I know Deputy Chief Zeka did a great job of putting this one together. Excellent. Maybe we can get something um, on the accreditation process for next month or the month after. Uh, just I'm, a little. I plan to do accreditation next month. Good, okay, fantastic. So uh, yeah, so any further questions for the chief or deputy chiefs? No. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I so move. To what? That we adjourn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Next meeting is uh, March 15th, 2021 at uh, 415. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay Have a good safe, night. everybody. Good night.